How you doing, guys? Dr. Nathan Thompson here with Exemplify Health Center, your wellness way affiliate right here in Yorkville, Illinois. Hope you guys are having an awesome Saturday morning. And I am live, as promised, uh, to go over how to increase your testosterone without all the gimmicks. I hope we have a lot of men that are watching right now. Uh, maybe we have a lot of women that are watching on behalf of their man, regardless of who you are. Uh, I'm going to go over something that is going to be really incredible. This is going to be geared really towards men. And one of the reasons why um, I go over this so much is because I know for a fact of testing hundreds and hundreds of, of men is that generally speaking, men's testosterone is has been in rapid decline. And I'm going to show you in just a second uh, over the past mm, couple of decades. And so this is actually has become a passion of mine because i have a lot of men uh, who reach out and they say i just don't feel like i used to in my 20s heck even in my 30s and what do i need to do in order to get back that feeling and guys a lot of it really has to to tie around um, the idea behind testosterone and how testosterone makes you feel so i will always tell you this is that hormones don't make you sick okay the hormones don't make you sick but they make you feel sick. This is the biggest thing that I'll tell women. This is the thing, biggest thing I'll tell men is that uh, hormones are merely responding to your environment that you're putting it in. Now, they'll make you feel bad, but they're really not going to be the reason why they're bad, which is why women will say, I need to balance my hormones. And the first thing that they run to is they run to someone who is going to give them hormones. And so as long as you have the machinery, men, as long as you have the machinery, women, then hormones are just responding to the environment. So they're the ones that are making you feel sick, but they're not the reason why you are sick. So we're going to talk about it very frankly today uh, from the wellness way perspective about testosterone and the things that you can do in order to start getting it back. I want to make sure, guys, that you watch to the very end. Uh, because for men, we're going to give you a link that you can join um, our Facebook group. And we'll, we're going to be giving you a bunch of resources on how you can start to help with your testosterone. Uh, and really, you can see measurable improvement really within a couple of weeks. So I want to make sure, guys, that you join that because we're going to have some awesome resources for you. And again, this is for men. This is not going to be for women because men and women are different. They're, they're different. So we're going to talk about some concepts today. We're going to talk about um, why uh, a man's testosterone is in decline, some of the symptoms that they're going to have, the things that we run to first, but I'm going to show you the really deeper issues when it comes to testosterone and how you can actually start to reclaim that. Now, full disclosure, guys, I'm going to be really frank about how I talk. Um, so this is going to be PG, maybe 13. So if you have young kids watching, they may not, you may not want them to actually watch this, but we need to just be really, really frank in having, a, in having a discussion. So one of the reasons why I do this. In fact, we're going to be doing this online. Normally, this is a this is an in-person event. It's an experience that men get to experience over the course of four weeks. Uh, but just to do to my schedule, I thought, all right, let's just do this online. And that way we can even reach even more people. So hopefully we're reaching people from all across the United States, Canada, and other countries as well. Because if you're a man, doesn't matter where you're from, this is going to be able to apply to you. So guys, one of the reasons why one of the reasons why I know that men are having such a hard time with their testosterone is because of the number of women who ask me, all right? <laughs> One of the jokes that I have is that people say, you know, or I say the number of men who admit to having low testosterone is approximately zero. The number of women who tell me about their men and their testosterone is about 100%. And this is how it usually goes. So guys, if you're watching, your women, your, your, your wives, your significant others, they know. And this is usually what they say. They say, Dr. Nate, um, thank you for helping me. I'm wondering if you can help my husband. Um, they're not the person I married, okay? They're not the person that I married. So I married this man that was motivated, that had vigor, that had energy. And now I have a man who is more like a really great roommate. He's just nice and agreeable with low energy, 
kind of likes to just watch TV, watch sports, but he's not active. He doesn't have the energy. He doesn't have the vigor in more ways than one than he used to. How can my husband get that back? And is it possible? I'm here to tell you that it is, but you do have to change the reasons why testosterone has been has been driven down. I want you guys to think of it as almost like a lot of the things that we've been given is that we've been given this gift of health and that the only thing that we do as we get older is that we think that is due to aging, but really what we do is we just destroy our bodies and we destroy the gift that we've been given. And so that we see hormones, we see function, we see all of those different things just continue to go in decline. And a lot of times people just don't know how to dig themselves out of the hole. And this is what we're going to go over today. Now, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest misconceptions that your doctor tells you, one of the biggest misconceptions that the media tells you is that they say, as you get older, your testosterone is supposed to go down. And guys, if you look at the difference between men and you look at the difference between women, women hormonally are literally can be a different person, especially while they're of the age of childbearing. They literally can be hormonally, have a different hormone profile, literally four times per month. So week one, week two, week three, week four, it's always going to be different. But men after puberty, they should have a very high testosterone level. And really that should stay consistent until the time that they die. So the difference between men and women is that women have a reproductive window but in reality, men are designed to be able to reproduce from puberty until the time that they die. Now, is does uh, testosterone decline with age? Yes, but just because it's common doesn't mean that it's normal. And there's a difference between the two. So if you look at 20 years and you look at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, you can see, according to this graph, that men's uh, total testosterone is in decline. But watch. I want to show you something, how we look at this from a different perspective, because the reason why it goes, excuse me, in decline isn't because you don't have the machinery anymore, because men look down. If you still have the machinery, you still have the ability to be able to produce testosterone. But the thing that drives it down isn't as much as its production, as much as it's getting converted into other hormones and what causes the, 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 the declining amounts of free testosterone, and it comes down to lifestyle. It comes down to lifestyle. So it just so happens that there's a lot of men who in their 20s have a really poor lifestyle, and they continue with a poor lifestyle, which is why you see testosterone levels driving down. Remember, here's what I said at the beginning, is that hormones make you feel lousy, but they're not the reason why you feel lousy. So we had to figure out what we're doing with our lifestyle that's driving down those levels because when you have testosterone in the 300s, you have testosterone in the 400s, as a man, you're not going to feel very good. And you know what? Your wife or significant other is probably uh, sensing the same thing as well. So here is a lab result that we did on an individual who, by the way, is 73 years of age. And when we tested his testosterone starting off, you could actually see that his testosterone in his 70s was at 333. Now, a doctor would look at that and say, yep, yeah, you know, you're in your 70s and that's actually you're not doing too bad. Now, this is a post-test of his testosterone and this was af after about four months. So 333 up to 637 without any kind of hormone replacement therapy or anything like that. This was actually just fixing lifestyle. And you can see that his testosterone basically doubled in about five months. So let me ask you a question. Did this person get older? Yes. So if he got older, then how on earth did his testosterone double in about four to five months? So this whole idea behind getting older and getting weaker and getting more fragile and getting more frail and getting run down and getting beat down has nothing to do with age as much as it has to do with your lifestyle. This should be great news. The reason why this should be great news is because it's 100% up to you. In fact, some people don't look at it as great news because they realize it's all up to them. And it's not some doctor, it's not some you know uh, specialist that's swooping in to save them. So who's responsible for your health? 
It's you, men. I'm going to talk directly to you. It's you. It's not your wife. It's not your doctor. It's no one else but you. And it's great news because you have a say in how you want to age and how you want to feel. Now, if you have young kids watching right now, go ahead and cover their eyes and cover their ears because I'm going to go over with you the symptoms of having low testosterone. Now, I always will tell you this. The best way to know is to actually test. And we run uh, an absolutely wonderful male uh, panel. We call it a male panel because it's looking at all of the things that if a man lives in Western society, all of the things that they are actually struggling with. So the best way to always measure it is to measure total and free testosterone and then look at all the other hormones to see if it can actually be converting into things like DHT and estradiol are just two. So what are the symptoms though, if you're saying, gosh, should I get it tested or not? Do I in fact have low testosterone? Your body will always leave you clues. And here's the first one. The first one is having a low sex drive or having trouble getting an erection, okay? Now, uh, men actually should be waking up with an erection every single morning. That's one of the signs if you have healthy testosterone levels. So many times, a wife will come to me and say, my husband doesn't have any sex drive. What's the issue? And I say, it's low testosterone. So that's the first symptom. But there's a lot of other symptoms as well. How about this one? Decreased body hair. So decreased body hair is a symptom of low testosterone. What's interesting is that you see, you'll know that men's testosterone specifically is in de decline if they are losing body hair all over their body. But the first place that you'll actually start to see it is going to be on the ankles. And I know what everybody thinks is they think it's because I wear socks. <laughs> it's not. It's not because you're wearing too tight of socks. Uh, it's because that if your testosterone begins getting converted into other hormones is that it begins to kill off the hair follicle. And the first place that you're gonna start to see it is you're gonna start to see it around the ankles working its way up the leg. How about this? Low energy and poor sleep. Low testosterone means you're just gonna feel like meh all the time. And also you will experience very poor sleep. And a lot of times what we see in men and women, when they start to have some issues hormonally, is that they tend to wake up uh, after falling asleep for three to four hours, and then they're up and they need sugar in order to help them fall back asleep. So low energy and poor sleep. You also will see that you have decreased muscle mass. You're going to see that you have increased body fat. So, you know, when men say, you know what, I'm only 10 pounds heavier than when I was when I was in college, I say that might not be true because if you're only 10 pounds heavier, how much muscle mass have you in fact lost? And in reality, when you do the math, losing muscle mass has been replaced with increased body fat. And a lot of times, really what they have is they've gained probably 30 or 40 pounds of fat and they've lost so much muscle mass as well. Another one that you can see is the development of what we would call man boobs or breasts. And this has to do with the conversion of testosterone into other hormones, specifically estradiol. So if your man is developing breasts, you know that his testosterone levels are going to be absolutely horrendous. Now, the other one too that you can see is you can see that there is a swollen prostate. So when a man starts to convert his testosterone into other hormones and the main one is going to be actually dihydrotestosterone or dht you will see that that stimulates growth of the prostate gland so if a man is developing issues with his prostate then he will tend to have problems starting uh urination stopping urination he'll have a very poor stream um, of, of urination um, and he'll tend to have to go to the bathroom a lot as well, which means that he's going to be waking up frequently in order to urinate. And the reason why is, is as the prostate swells, it swells into the bladder and there's just less space for the, for the bladder to be able to store urine. Now, here's what's interesting because, you know, when you look at medications that doctors give for this, you're going to understand that a lot of medications that they give for a swollen prostate are actually the same medications that they give for people who don't want to bald. 
And so what these are basically are is that they are called DHT blockers. So they're actually blocking DHT production from testosterone and it will then stop the swelling of the prostate. And what's interesting as well is that it can stop uh, balding on the top of the head. Now, here's what they don't tell you is that if you start taking these medications without fixing your lifestyle, is that these medications are basically just switching one hormone conversion into another one, and the other one can be estradiol. And so if you don't fix your lifestyle, your prostate got smaller, but your boobs got bigger, okay? They don't tell you this. And so this is why it all comes down to lifestyle. If you can fix this with your lifestyle, why would you wanna take a medication that will just cause a side effect and actually uh, just start to create a lot more problems. And here's the last one that I wanna go over guys. And if you are enjoying this, please make sure you share this. I don't know if you should tag someone like a man that you know, you know, because maybe you might be telling them or saying, hey, I think you have low testosterone, but please share this because what I'm gonna go over with you next is gonna start making a whole lot of sense. But the last probably biggest symptom that I see from a psychological uh, perspective is that men with low testosterone, they tend to dawdle. And if you know what dawdle means, it means that they can't make decisions anymore. They just sit and they just stew and they become so indecisive. And remember, one of the side effects of testosterone is yet it's designed for really sperm production, muscle mass, but it also gives very singular and very clear thinking. And this is why with a, a man with high testosterone, they tend to be excellent decision makers, whether it's right or whether it's wrong, but they tend to be very singular focused. In fact, you should wake up in the morning and if you have normal testosterone, we're talking at least into the seven, eight hundreds, you tend to wake up and you tend to be very singular focused. You're focused on one thing and you tend not to have 19,000 things on your mind. And this is actually what makes men men, is that being very singular focused, the ability to get things done, but if you dawdle, you can't make decisions and you tend to be very unproductive as a result. So let me ask you a question. Is this you? Do you guys have one of the symptoms? You have three, do you have four, or maybe you have all of them. And if you have these symptoms that are going on, then I'm gonna tell you that your testosterone is in the tank. Now, the best way to always find out is to be able to test it, but also to test the reasons why it actually might be low. And this is where we run to, all right? This is where we run to, is that if we say, Dr. Nate, I have low testosterone, can you give me, can you give me something that's gonna get my testosterone levels up? And so this is how we think in the United States because we've been trained to actually take this for that in some kind of simplistic approach. Because we've always been taught we have an infection, take an antibiotic. If we have asthma, take an inhaler. If we have acne, we're gonna take medications. We're gonna take Accutane. If we have poor skin, we're gonna put this on our skin. If we have poor hair, we're gonna throw some special shampoo. And it's always about trying to take something from the outside in, in order to correct all our problems. A lot of times people say, well, I don't wanna take medication. Can you give me something natural? But I'm gonna tell you guys something is that it's still the wrong thinking. Yes, there are things that you can do that can help with uh, testosterone production, conversion and blocking certain things. But you know what? When I start off with a man, I rarely with ever recommend anything to do it. And the reason why is, is because if you start recommending things like tribulus, passion flower, you start recommending things like nettle leaf, you start recommending um, things like saw palmetto, or you start recommending things that are really designed to, yes, they can influence testosterone production, even zinc. You can start, you start doing that. Yes, you can still stimulate those things to go down some very bad pathways. So if you guys watch the commercials today, you don't have to watch very long these commercials that are talking about um, testosterone replacement therapy. Guys, if you do that with a poor lifestyle, you are going to become a lab experiment and you start going down a really bad uh, road because you don't know how that testosterone is converted. 
Um, why do I know this? Because I see it all the time in men who come to me and I say, yeah, my doctor recommended testosterone replacement therapy. I felt great for maybe a year or two. Then it just, it wasn't working. But then I started to have other issues going on. So can you take those things? Absolutely. All you have to do, go to your health food store and you will see it on multiple, multiple shelves. And why do they carry it? Because it's so common for men to have problems with testosterone production. So we don't want an outside in approach. We want an inside, uh, an inside out approach. And this is where lifestyle comes in. So here you got Frank Thomas, Hall of Fame baseball player. And he says, you know, I hit my 40s. I wasn't feeling very good. And I took this miracle, magical supplement, you know, with maca, stinging nettle, fenugreek. <laughs> I mean, uh, macuna seed, all of these different things. And wow, it really changed my life. And I look at Frank Thomas with no disrespect to Frank Thomas. And he doesn't look like he is the picture of lifestyle. So the only thing that this can do for a long period of time is, yes, it may drive those things up, but if you don't fix your lifestyle, the only thing it's going to do is you're going to be just like Frank Thomas, and you're going to eventually need to be wearing some support. All right? I won't get any deeper than that. So I want to show you my own journey as we go into the four different things on what you can do in order to start fixing some of these things. But this is me. So this whole idea behind you're supposed to get worse as you get older that you're supposed to be in decline after your 20s, that it gets worse in your 30s, it gets worse in your 40s, it gets even worse in your 50s, is absolutely untrue. So this was me when I was 30 years of age. So you can see a picture of me and my beautiful wife. And you can see that, obviously, I was having a little bit of problem with my lifestyle. And full disclosure, I was. I was busy. I was working a lot. I was stressed out. Um, I was working 70 hours a week. I had the, the excuse all the time. Uh, I would say, I don't have time. I'm going to fix it down the road. I still have time to do it. And, you know, I'll just do it later. Uh, when I, when we took this picture, uh, this was right before my oldest son uh, was born, which was, this was about almost 14 or 15 years ago. And actually it wasn't that long after that that I, in fact, flunked my life insurance test. How embarrassing was that? So uh, they basically said, you are a high risk for heart attack. And I said, it's impossible. I'm 30 years of age. Um, how on earth could that happen? And they say, we don't know. We don't care. We're life insurance. You're high risk now, and you are going to pay a whole heck of a lot more. So fast forward, and this is about 11 years later. So if you see the difference, of 11 years. And in fact, over that, I ended up losing about 30 pounds. I got in the absolute best shape of my life. I wasn't consuming uh, high amounts of sugar. I wasn't consuming high amounts of um, junk food. Um, I wasn't drinking six cans of Coke a night like I was <laughs> before. But when you look at the difference, this is a difference of over a decade. Yet, which one do you think has higher testosterone? And that's why is when a doctor tells you you're getting older and it's supposed to get worse, what I would first say is I would run away from that doctor because they know nothing about lifestyle. They know nothing about what it takes in order to be healthy. And they have no idea how to take you from where you are to where you want to be. So I want to tell you guys something is that, yes, I have struggled with this as well, but I've actually overcome it. And if I can overcome it because I possess no great superhero skills, if I can overcome it, I know for a fact that you can as well. So guys, let's go over the four roadblocks to producing testosterone or to maintain testosterone. And there's four biggest things that I want to go over with you. The first one is stress. The second one is going to be inflammation. The third one is going to be sugar and insulin. And then finally, the fourth one is going to be some specific things that you can change with your lifestyle, including things like fasting and doing high intensity, short duration, functional type exercise. So the first thing that I want to talk about is I want to talk about stress. Okay. Now, Stress is one of the biggest killers. 90% of, of, of doctors' visits now, according to the CDC, which I rarely agree with them, but in this case I do, is they say 90% of doctors' visits are really due to psychological stress that's going on. So guys, we are stressed out more than ever before. 
And I would also say we're even more stressed out over the last two years with all of the things that we have been going through. So what on earth is stress? And stress can be defined simply as this. It's a physiological or psychological. It can be physiological, physically and chemically, but it can also be a mental stimulus that can produce mental or physiological reactions that what? That lead to illness. So I want you to think of this, is that if a bear is chasing you, you are going to have a psychological and a physiological response to a bear chasing you. You are actually going to see your testosterone go up. You're actually going to see adrenaline go up. You're going to see your respiration go up. You're actually going to see your cholesterol go up. You're going to see all of these physiological changes. And actually, in the short term, this is a wonderful, beautiful response because if this individual right here, if he doesn't have a physiological response to the bear, then he will never be able to run away from the bear. He'll never be able to fight the bear. But stress is designed to be short term. But in many people, including men, is that it's no longer a short-term response. It now becomes a what's known as a long-term adaptation to this stress. So if you do have, let's say, a lot of mental stress, you will be producing from your adrenal glands and releasing a lot of adrenaline. And you're also going to have a lot of cortisol. And that cortisol puts you into fight or flight, which is a great response but you're not supposed to be in fight or flight perpetually over the course of 10, 15, or 20 years. And in fact, you can basically look at this as a scale, is that if you have the higher amount of cortisol long-term, you will have a lower amount of, of testosterone. And once you think of it like this, is that if you are perpetually stressed, your body says, this isn't a good time to reproduce. We, we don't want you reproducing when your body is in a perpetual state of stress. And if you can actually help to lower that stress response, you can actually allow testosterone to start to recover. So is there a mental, a, a mental a standpoint, a mental perspective when it comes to testosterone? Yes. And we're talking about the unrelenting psychological stress that many people have been under. This is also true in women. When women are undergoing tremendous amounts of stress, you will kiss your hormones goodbye, particularly progesterone. And if you start having uh, problems with progesterone converting into other hormones, particularly stress hormone, then you're going to have a really bad day when it comes to fertility. Now, the next one, how, do you, how can you start to influence your cortisol levels? One of the first things that you can do to actually to start lowering that is to start getting more sleep. Okay, is start getting more sleep. You'll notice your cortisol levels will start to go up if you are perpetually not getting enough sleep. That's why you see blood pressure go up, heart rates start to go up. If you're only getting four or five or maybe even only six hours of sleep, but if a man can start getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep consistently, actually going to bed uh, at about 10 o'clock, you'll actually will see testosterone start to go up. And in fact, one of the quickest ways to deplete and decrease uh, your testosterone is to have about five nights of getting really, really poor sleep. And you will oh, you'll already will see changes with your testosterone profile. Second roadblock is going to be inflammation. And we see men who are so chronically inflamed. So yes, when it comes to inflammation, you have the psychological component of stress and poor sleep. But you also have to consider things like physical and chemical stressors that are causing inflammation. Guys, this is why, you know, men who are perpetually injured is they, they are just, they have so much physical trauma going on. This actually comes down to things like the spine. This comes down to the nerve system, which we have men come in. We're always x-raying uh, them and looking at, you know, what's happening from uh, physical stressors. But then you also have chemical stressors and inflammation, which is why if a man is highly inflamed, they have high C-reactive protein, they have high homocysteine levels, um, you know, they have uh, other higher, you know, different types of inflammatory markers, you can basically know that their testosterone is going to be really low. They're inflamed, they're sick, and they're injured 
why would your testosterone be high at that point? Because again, it's not a good reason to, or it's not a good time to be reproducing. So a lot of people will come to me and they'll say, Dr. Nate, I eat clean. I'm eating clean. I'm doing awesome. And I say, describe to me what clean is. Well, you know, I'm not eating any processed foods. I'm not eating any processed sugar. And I say, okay, well, yeah, I guess that could be cleaner. But the cleanest way that anybody, including men, can eat is to be eating non-inflammatory. And there are so many people who are in such a rut and they're not uh, progressing as, on their health journey, mainly because they think that they're eating clean, but in reality, they're still eating inflammatory. And there's a difference between the two. When we talk about uh, clean eating, the first and foremost things is that it should be non-inflammatory. And then you start working your way up past that. And in fact, this is an x-ray of a man who um, has was eating clean. And when you look at this, you can see here's the stomach over here. We're looking at him from the back stomach. And you can see all kinds of gastrointestinal uh, inflammation that's going on. The biggest thing that you see, so you see how big his stomach is and how swollen and inflamed the stomach is. And the first thing is, is have him try to eat clean or have him try to eat keto. And I'm going to guarantee you, he won't be breaking down and digesting his proteins at all because he needs a lot of stomach acid. And there's a, a picture right there of a person who doesn't have enough stomach acid um, who will never be able to break down and digest their proteins and assimilate them within the body. So clean eating actually comes down to first and foremost, looking at the foods that are causing an inflammatory response. So this person's got things like barley, eggs, black and white pepper, pork, safflower, chia seeds, sesame, tuna, watermelon, brewer's yeast, wheat. I want you to think about it. There's actually some foods on here that are very good for you, that are very nutrient dense, but they're not good for you if they're causing an inflammatory response. Now, I'm not going to go into why people develop food allergies, but if you're eating foods and they're even good for you, yet you have an inflammatory response to them, that's the first thing that you have to do as far as helping with chemical inflammation. Roadblock number three is sugar and insulin. And guys, the United States has a big problem with sugar. But Dr. Nate, I don't eat sugar. And I'm, I say, well, you don't eat the finely granulated powder that most people have an addiction to. Um, it's not cocaine, it's actually sugar, but it's also the things that rapidly convert to sugar, break down into sugars um, when you consume them. So I don't eat sugar, but I say, okay, but do you eat bread? Do you eat pasta? Do you eat things like white rice? And do you think ha, eat things that contain tons of added sugar, including high fructose corn syrup, which is literally death to your liver if you keep consuming that? So there are things that have hidden sources of high fructose corn syrup. Look at the ingredients, ketchup, <laughs> uh, soda, jams, jellies, um, uh, different kind of salad dressings. It's everywhere. And so when people say, oh, well, we, we shouldn't re be restricting our sugars. You need it. And I'm saying, how much sugar are you consuming? Because we consume way too much sugar. And it usually starts by the time that we're three or four years of age, which is no wonder by the time that we're 30 or 34, 36, 40 years of age, we're having a really bad day when it comes to blood sugar control and liver inflammation. So I want you to think about this is that this right here, when you look at how much sugar your body can tolerate at one time, it's about a teaspoon. It's about four to five grams. If you consume that, that's a, what can be immediately used by your cells. If you consume more than that, then it has to be stored. So I want you to think of this. You consume all of this, and I guarantee you, it's not. you're not consuming just a teaspoon. It could probably be 15 to 20 teaspoons in one sitting. Your body can't handle that. So anything more than a teaspoon is going to elicit an insulin response from your pancreas in order to store the sugar. So what happens is, is that if you don't use it as immediate energy, well, then it has to be stored. They get stored in the liver. You can store about 500 grams. But once the liver and some of the muscles are filled up with what is known as stored sugar, otherwise known as glycogen, then it has to go somewhere else 
and where most of it is going to is in the form of triglycerides. It gets packaged up in the liver and gets sent out as triglycerides for fat storage. And this is why, guys, grab your old lab test and uh, look at it and see what your triglyceride levels are. If your triglyceride levels are in the triple digits, then you are consuming too much sugar or your liver is having a really bad day. And in fact, I just went over uh, labs with someone today and his triglyceride levels were at 1500. Now they're down to about 400 and we expect them to go into the, the double digits within the next three to four months. And the reason why is because we know how to work with the liver. So guys, the reason why you put on fat, and I'm gonna show you why fat is so damaging to your testosterone levels, isn't because you consume too much fat, it's because you are consuming too much sugar entirely. So check your triglyceride levels. So look at sugar and insulin, here's what happens. So here are, these are known as your sex hormone uh, pathway. These are the pathways on how these hormones are created and how they're also converted. You may see some that may be a little bit familiar. How about cholesterol? So I want you to think of cholesterol. Cholesterol is the backbone to all of your sex hormones or your steroid hormones. They're the backbone, which means you cannot produce hormones if you do not have adequate amounts of cholesterol. But Dr. Nate, Dr. Nate, I looked at my cholesterol. The doctor says it's high. And I say, well, what's high? According to who? According to my doctor. Well, who told your doctor? I don't know. Well, it was a drug company. The drug company told you, told the doctor when cholesterol is too high. And they're usually saying it's at 200. You guys realize that men have heart attacks with cholesterol under 200. Men also can have cholesterol, uh, heart attacks with cholesterol over 200. Looking at your heart attack risk by looking at cholesterol is basically like looking at a scale and, de and deciding that a, every person should be under 200 pounds. I always say, if someone gets on the scale, I ask people this, if someone gets on the scale and they weigh 300 pounds, are they considered obese? And everyone says, yes, they are. I say, well, what happens if I told you this person was 10 foot tall? Because if a person was 10 foot tall and normal, then they would be over 300. And this is why we have to stop having this discussion that there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. There's only, the only thing that exists is appropriate cholesterol that your body is utilizing because of demand and because of need. So if you go on uh, cholesterol medications, I'm gonna tell you it doesn't take cholesterol out of the body. What it does is it blocks the production of cholesterol, the very thing that you need to produce, if you look here, testosterone. So guys, men who go on statins, not only do they have problems with the brain, they have problems with you know a forgetfulness, uh, early onset dementia, but what they also suffer with is they're gonna suffer with low testosterone, which is why as soon as statin drugs came out, they came out with uh, erectile dysfunction drugs as well. So the statin conversation needs to be had with every single one of your doctors, because if you are artificially lowering cholesterol, and I've heard doctors say, you can never have too low a cholesterol. And I say, drop it down to 120, and you're gonna have a man who's gonna have low testosterone, low energy, they're gonna have fatigue, muscle aches and pains, poor sleep, but you know what? That cholesterol is just right on track. And meanwhile, their life and their health is getting absolutely destroyed. So cholesterol is needed to produce testosterone. Now, testosterone, as long as you have enough of the constituents to be able to create it, and yes, you do need cholesterol. Yes, you do need some other things like zinc and things like that. But as long as you are making it, the next thing that has to happen is, is how is it getting converted? And how is it getting cleared from your body, which is also known as your liver? So one of the things that will cause testosterone to be converted are things like high insulin, which means it's due to high amounts of sugar. Alcohol will do this as well. Chronic inflammation will do this as well. And then also obesity. See, here's what happens. You produce testosterone. It should be converted actually into what is known as uh, estrone and then cleared through the liver. So, um, 
the liver clears this out all of the time, which means if you start having problems with your liver, like alcohol, trans fats, a diet high in high fructose corn syrup, it will create liver inflammation. It will create fatty liver and it will cause a decrease in the body's the liver's ability to be able to clear these things out. But here's what's also interesting is that not only does the liver needed to clear those out, and yes, this is true for women as well, but you also need the liver in order to take a fatty acid and be able to make energy also known as fat metabolism. And this is why people say, Dr. Nate, I can't lose fat. I try to eat less. I can't lose fat. Dr. Nate, I'm exercising all the time. It doesn't matter what I do. I cannot lose fat. And I always will say, it's your liver. You need to start working on your liver. Otherwise, what happens is, is you're going to be perpetually trying to eat sugar. You're going to have to eat it all the time. You're always going to have poor sleep and you'll have a heck of a time trying to lose weight. And in fact, what your body will do uh, first is it will actually lower your thyroid output before it will actually burn fat. It can't burn fat anymore. So it starts to lower your metabolism. So this guys is so interesting. Here's what happens. I hope this is making sense. If this makes sense to you, please leave a comment saying this is making perfect sense. Oh my goodness, what do I need to do? So I want you to think of this. Most people are coming in and they have a very high insulin. Because they have high insulin and you expose yourself to a high amount of hormones, the cells can't hear it anymore. They no longer react. They actually go into what is known as insulin resistance. It keeps driving up insulin in order to try to get energy into your cells. So what happens is the sugar can't go into the cells. Sugar then gets stored as fat. And all of that fat is actually going to convert a man's testosterone into estradiol. And if they can't clear it through the liver, they will have, even men have estrogen dominance. And what does it look like? It looks like they become very emotional. They become extremely agreeable. They actually will start to develop man breasts. Instead of putting fat on the belly, they put it on the, on the hips, on the thighs, on the back. They will start to actually put fat on uh, that's different, that's different than how a man typically actually stores fat. So the key is guys, is that you start to ha you have to start um, addressing some of these lifestyle type things. Okay. Stick with me. Cause I'm going to go over what you can do about it at the end in just a couple of minutes, but the last roadblock, this is specific, specific to men, especially because I have told women, please stop exercising. Um, but for men, they can tolerate exercise a little bit more because they are not dependent on a menstrual cycle that in which it can tank their progesterone if they have so many different other stressors. So roadblock number four is going to be how you exercise. So a lot of men don't exercise at all, but we want them to be able to exercise, but then we want to have and help them take it to another level, which is how you are exercising. And this is why I always say, if you are exercising in a way, that is decreasing muscle mass, you can kiss your testosterone goodbye. So what that means is, is that guys, if you decide to exercise, what you really need to stop doing is to be going on an elliptical, be going on a Stairmaster, or be going on some kind of long jog, because all it does is it starts robbing your muscle mass. And in fact, if you do want to just absolutely crush your, your uh, testosterone, just keep going and doing marathon type training. Okay. So this right here will make you look like a marathon runner by doing low intensity, uh, straightforward movement. And just think about this, men, we were designed to be hunters. We weren't designed to say, you know what? I am going to jog at a moderate pace for the next five miles. We were designed to be able to hunt. We were designed to be able to jump. We were designed to be able to sprint. We were designed to do these short bouts of high intensity type exercise. Yet at some reason we stopped doing that and our bodies have started to resemble the couch rather than how we were actually created to be. So how you should be exercising should be number one, constantly varied, meaning you mix it up all the time. It should be functional, meaning you are doing things that you need in everyday life, which is running, which is jumping, changing directions, which is squatting, lifting, deadlifting, pulling things up. You need to be doing 
things that you need in everyday life and you should it should be done at a high intensity you want to help as far as um, becoming an efficient fat burner start doing high intensity type exercise and yes it is extremely uncomfortable to do it but the biggest transformation that it will that will create is not only in your body but it is the one that it will create in your mind because when you start putting yourself um, into situations that are hard and that are uncomfortable it will translate into everyday life one of my biggest beefs is um and i'm going to rant for just a little bit is why we are still in this whole pandemic thing is because the men have not stood up for their families and said enough is enough and the reason why is is i believe the men that haven't been standing up probably have a testosterone in the 200s and 300s and they just don't have the energy and they just don't have the decisiveness to start standing up for what is right and i guarantee you when you start exercising this way there is something that is going to switch inside your brain and you're going to finally start standing up and actually start becoming how we were genetically and how we were physiology uh, physiologically created is to be the protector to be the one that is the ruler the one that is the leader and we are missing so many men today who are that way because um, of what their lifestyle actually is. So it's how you work out with lifestyle, but it's also when you eat. I also believe we eat too much and we also eat too often. This whole idea behind eating six meals a day is really not necessary. So this actually, as far as helping your body start to burn fat as an energy source, so that you stop creating so much estradiol, um, fasting can be a useful tool from that. So I want you to look at this, is that you have your first meal, your last meal, and that basically you're not burning any fat from six to 14 hours. You're using your energy from your blood sugar. Um, then you're using some from your stored blood sugar, glycogen from liver and muscles. And then at 14 to 16 hours, you're burning fat, 16 to 24 you are in fat burning this only happens if your liver is functioning on all cylinders okay so this is why fasting can be a useful tool is to get yourself into the mode of which you're burning fat as an energy source so i, I want to show you how this actually works this is a real life example so this is keith and he actually came to me as a uh basically a type 2 diabetic felt awful pain in all of his body. And he said, yes, you can share my story because he has an awesome story and he has a great ending. So you can see how we measure all of these different things. Uh, this is actually measuring body fat percentage. So you can see as he's gone through this, that he has lost over 50 pounds. You can see also that his body fat percentage has gone from 38 down to 23. In fact, it's even gotten better than that. Now, through that whole process, you can see testosterone at 171 up to 417, no longer a type 2 diabetic. And you also see this is a lab marker that will show if someone's got a swollen, fatty, and a flame liver. You can see that his stored iron was at 383 and his stored iron went down to 170. And that actually means that, that how, one of the lab markers that we use to see if the liver is having a really bad day is to look at serum ferritin or your stored iron. As the liver gets more inflamed, you will be hanging on to iron a lot more. So you can see, here's what happened. And this is actually him when he started, and this is him uh, today. So is there a difference? Yes, there's a radical difference. And he did all of those four things that I told him to do and guess what? He got older, but he got healthier. As he got healthier, his testosterone got better. And this is why we don't buy into the narrative with so many different things that are happening with health. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. I hope, men, you're watching. And if you're still watching, there's the tough question is you have a choice. You have a choice to do easy now or choose hard later. And what I mean by hard is feeling miserable, feeling lousy, going to the doctor, getting all of your pills and medications and still feeling lousy and end up under a surgeon's knife, end up on an operating table or end up in the nursing home with regret. And that regret is saying, you know what? I could have done something 
but I chose easy and now it's much harder. Or what you can start doing is you can start choosing the hard now so that it becomes much more easy and much more enjoyable later. The reality is this, is that it's always gonna be hard, but you get to choose your hard. And this is one of the reasons why I choose hard every day because I want my life to be easier. I choose hard today because later on I get choices. If you continually choose easy every day, that hard is not going to be your choice. It's always going to be hard. Choose your hard. So this is what I want to go over with you, okay? So men, pay attention to this. Is Here's how you can start to get this under control. Even if we haven't done any kind of testing, some of these things really are going to be universal. And yes, there are some people who may have a little bit of a hard time doing with this. But if you start doing this, I can guarantee you that if you do this for 30 days, that this can change your life, uh, not only when it comes to physically, but also mentally. Because at the end of the 30 days, you want your wife or significant other to say, what on earth happened to you? I no longer have a roommate. I have a lover. <laughs> so this is the challenge that I want you to do. Normally what we do, start off with people, when we do our man up challenge is we start off and you start off with doing a three day water fast. If you said, I can't do that, then I'm going to say, I agree. You can't do it. Go ahead and walk away. Because as soon as you tell someone that you tell yourself you can't do it, you're going to be absolutely right. Guys, I do a three to five day water fast four times a year. I'm going to be starting it tomorrow and doing a three day water fast. Um, Basically, what this is, is water only and no food, okay? This is for men only. Um, 28 days of no processed sugar, um, none, zero, none whatsoever, and then getting in all of your food within six hours per day. So what that means is that you fast for 18 hours, no food, only water, and then you get your food in within a six-hour window, which means you have... Uh, basically two meals a day and you get to skip one meal, whether it's breakfast or whether it's dinner, it's going to be up to you. You're going to commit to doing seven to eight hours of sleep per night, making sure that you're in bed by 10 o'clock. Dr. Nate, why on earth does 10 o'clock matter? I like to go to bed at one and I like to wake up at nine or eight o'clock in the morning. The reason why is this, is that from about nine o'clock to midnight, is your greatest opportunity for melatonin production. And melatonin is the universal antioxidant and rebuilder and repair of your cells, which means that if you aren't getting enough melatonin production, you are not going to get antioxidant uh, support within the cell and energy system support within the mitochondria. So this is why melatonin is so important, especially when it comes to recovery especially when it comes to exercise recovery. Now, I want you to start working out as well. When we do this in person, people are at our gyms and they're working out and we're taking them through a whole exercise, uh, exercise program, coached and everything. But I can't coach everybody remotely or individually. So what I want you guys to start doing is to start doing burpees. Dr. Nate, what is a burpee? It's called YouTube and you can look it up. So I want you doing 1,000 burpees over the next 28 to 30 days, which means if you do that, you are committed to 50 to 55 burpees per day uh, for five days a week for about four weeks. That's about how long you would uh, you would do it for. It's not uh, 50 burpees whenever three here, seven here, two here. It's 50 burpees all at once at the highest intensity possible in the shortest amount of time as possible. So commit to doing high intensity, functional uh, training, commit to doing that. And yes, I know it's hard. Yes, I know it's uncomfortable. Yes, I know that it's inconvenient. But you know what else is inconvenient? Um, telling your son that you don't have the energy to play basketball with him. Not only is that inconvenient, but that is devastating to your family. So commit to doing things that are inconvenient. Commit to doing things that are hard. Because again, you, you, you can choose hard now so that it becomes easier 
later on in life, okay? So, Dr. Nate, I don't know what to do. What, what on earth am I supposed to do? Here is what I want you to do. In the description of this video, the description of this video, I have a link to join our uh, Exemplify Health Center Men's Challenge group, okay? So the name of the group is called Exemplify Health Center's Man Up Challenge. You're going to see it right here. Now, I have a link on this uh, in the description of this video, so you can click on the link. You can ask to join when you are approved what we have in there under the files of the group. So it's under the files is we have a couple of resources for you. This is completely free for you. So one of them is a guide to fasting. So this goes over how to do a three-day fast, including if you need minerals like magnesium, potassium, salt, and things like that. But it also goes over the idea of how to become a better intermittent faster. So how to do this, it'll start to remove yourself down to 1410, uh, 16, eight down to 18, six intermittent fasting. Heck, even some people are doing, uh, 20 hours of fasting and four hours of eating. So it shows how to do that as well. So it will go over how to do it fast, how to do intermittent fasting. We also have, when we say 28 days of no processed sugar, uh, we have the foods that are saying, yes, you can do this. No, you shouldn't do this. And then also there are some recipes that you can start to utilize as well. And then finally, uh, we're going to be giving you um, our home workout book. So this does require, yes, you can do your thousand burpees. Or if you're a little bit more advanced, one of the things that you can do is you can download this book. There's about 75 different workouts that you can do. Um, and basically, you'll see the equipment that you need, things like a jump rope, kettlebell, uh, maybe an ab mat, and then a what are known as a medicine ball or a slam ball. Um, and you can order this literally from Amazon and have it at your house within two to three days. And so you'll see uh, 75 different workouts. I tell people, if you did those workouts five days a week, uh, basically, you would go through all of the workouts um, you know, in, in, in a couple of months. And then you can repeat them every couple of months, but it's how you keep it functional. It's how you keep it constantly varied. And it also is utilizing all of the different um, muscle groups um, so that basically you start looking like how a man is supposed to look, which means very lean, very muscular, um, and having the right type of muscle systems that can actually make you an athlete again. So guys, go to that group. This is for men only because I know that I'm gonna see a bunch of women who wanna join the group and it's not for you, it is for men only. And I know people are gonna say, yeah, but my husband doesn't have a Facebook account, get him a Facebook account if only for this reason so that he can download this resource, okay? Because in that group occasionally, we'll talk about subjects that are only for men. And ladies, we don't want you in there, all right? So guys, make sure you go to that group, ask to join, we'll approve you, and then you can go ahead and you can download those resources, all right? Guys, I finished this in exactly an hour. I can't believe that, okay? So guys, I hope that you found this um, enjoyable. I hope you found that you gained a lot of insight into this. And most importantly, I appreciate you guys always watching. And I always appreciate any kind, any time that you guys share this material to other people, because I truly believe um, that we can change the world when we start helping sick people become well and helping well people stay well for the rest of their life. That we don't become dependent on any doctor, that we learn how to take care of ourselves and that we teach our children how to take care of them, themselves as well. So guys, I am off to my next speaking event with uh, Dr. McCullough here in about two hours. And so uh, I gotta go, but again, drop a comment uh, below and make sure that you share this. Guys, be well, be blessed, have a great rest of your day and we'll see you soon.